Hey guys, Wages World here. Um, guys, you're gonna today's uh, the 15th uh, of July, 2021. Um, you, anybody that's been around for a minute probably recognizes that intro. Um, I'm going back to a little bit of my older style for in the morning. I'm going to give you guys a morning update type of thing at least once a day. Um, I'm still going to do some live streaming and stuff in between all that. So um, yeah, you might if you want to hang around for the live streaming and stuff, you might want to hit the bell. I don't usually say that. I don't really hold too much stock and all that. But if you want to be here for the live streams, hit the bell. So that way, you know what I'm saying? You can be here for that. Uh, but this is going to be more about just showing you guys the, the data and what's going on with the space weather tools and all that. Now, if there's something big going on, obviously, I will at least touch on it. Um, but, yeah, so I will be doing a, a live stream probably later on today because there are a lot of things going on outside of just typical space weather. Um, and we're going to talk about that. Um, I got, I've been doing some research for a while. And um, so, yeah, so at least check back later on. Um, I'll probably do a live stream. So anyway, here's the Schumann Resonance. And I'm not going to give a big explanation on what that is. Go watch uh, uh, the beginning of one of my recent videos. I always tell you what this thing is and what it can do. Um, I'm trying to keep this down to 15 minutes or less for people that don't have the time. So, um, yeah. Obviously, guys, this is something that uh, this is something we're, we see all the time now. This these uh, disruptions that we see here, most definitely happening more often than what it what it used to. Is it because our sun's getting more active? Um, I think it has something to do with it. But it, that was that the uptick here in the Schumann was actually happening before the uptick of the sun activity coming into the new solar cycle. So that's what you're seeing there. Um, but you know, can I tell you exactly what's causing this? No, I can't. But is this coming from, is this a global thing? Most likely, especially when you see it over and over and over again. Now remember, these are local tools, and this is in Russia, this tool here is. So it could be, anything can affect this. Thunderstorms, all those kinds of things. Snow, all of it can affect the tool here and how it's reading. But when we see these things happening over and over and over again, it does lend to kind of a global thing. So... And again, I'm not going to get into too much detail of what this thing can actually do to you. Just know they put it into our spacecraft and people that work underground so they don't go nuts. Um, we require a certain hurt level. And again, like I said, I'm not going to go too much more into that. Um, you <coughs> Space Weather Prediction Center here, guys. Um, obviously, our X-ray production's up because we've got more active areas on the sun facing Earth. Okay, I showed you guys yesterday in my live stream how the, the baseline was down. Um, and remember, why is that important? Well, because if we had this size of a flare happen when the baseline was up here, it would have made this a little bit stronger. That's all. Okay, so no big flaring going on, but there is a, a consistent uptick. And it's got us seeing a lot more, uh, not a lot more, but more x-ray. Um now, geomagnetic activity. This was caused from a, a, a coronal hole stream, and it was a high-dense coronal hole stream. All right? It did, we didn't get into storm level, but we got close. Remember that, you know, KP of 5 is the same as a geomagnetic storm level 1. Will we see big stuff from that? No, probably not. Very minor stuff. The biggest thing that you might see would be an uptick in the aurora. Okay, which is exactly what happened anyway, maybe not to the level that it could have if we were in, you know, higher stuff, but this is what we would see. Um, if these things stretch down closer to the equator, yeah, uh, that means we take a pretty decent hit. I'm not, again, I'm not going to get too much into detail why that is. Um, I've done that in the past, and I'll still do it, but not every video. Um, now, like I said a minute ago, guys, high dense Corona hole stream caused that, right? Well, your density normal is four, and that's the that's the orange line here. And um, if you go over here to discover and take a look at it, everything's above four up to 20, 25. I think this got up to 30 at one point, maybe close to it. Yep, 38. Now, usually it takes a little more than just density to give us a good hit geomagnetically. Things have to happen, right? BZ is the angle. 
right? So we look for negative six. That's its threshold. And we definitely got there. Wherever you see it in the purple, that's where it would be. Now, we didn't stay there very consistently long there at all, but we did go there a little bit. That might be why we had a bump up when we got this dense material, because it all kind of happened right around the same time. Didn't last very long, which is another thing that does affect our geomagnetic activity. Um, why do we care about geomagnetic activity? Well, we need some of that to strengthen our magnetic field. Um, it helps that. But when it gets too strong, then we have the big storms, and then you start talking about humongous, like, CMEs and stuff. Then we're having, you know, the big conversations. Now, solar wind speed, 3 to 500 is normal. We never got out of that kilometers per second so yeah we never got outside of that range if we had of it might have pushed us over triangle did flip here that's why you see blue to red um that's the polarity of the solar wind solar winds charge particles so it has a polarity right negative positive when those flip sometimes it will give us a jerk geomagnetically especially if it's happening at the same time other things are going on it can intensify something that's already happening. Or it could actually cause a geomagnetic storm. We've seen that happen before too. Okay. So my thumbnail, guys, I'll be showing you a halo CME, right? Is it coming at us? Well, no, it's not. All right. And let me show you why I know this. And the reason is this is Lasco C2. It's on Soho. It's a satellite a million miles closer to the sun than what we are. So what are we looking at here? It's basically our perspective, right? This red disc here is a physical thing that's on this tool on the satellite that blocks the main, the main part of the light out so it can do its job and get us to capture it all. This is representing the rough estimate of the size of the sun. So watch what happens. Let me back it up here. Okay, see that? Boom. Now, um... I was looking at spaceweather.com. Uh, go give them some love, guys. We'll go there here in a minute anyway. Um, but they were talking about it. Even, like I said, I was going to do a video <laughs> on this anyway. But they're pretty much saying what, exactly what I was thinking. Um, when we first see these, those of us that watch these tools all the time, you know, we, we get a little excited when we see this, this halo, right? That's a blast from the sun. We don't know if it's coming right at us or going off the backside. Because of this occulter, the perspective we have, right? So how do we know? Well, we got to go look at the side view. And that's this over here. This is stereo A. This is our, you know, partially backside view of the, of the sun, but it's on the side. Okay, the satellite would be here. Earth would be over and around this direction. It's not, per it's not a perfect 90 degree, right? It's kind of here. So watch what happens here. Boom, right? Big one, right? Um, that is it's substantial, okay? So now that this is going to the left, we know Earth is here. We know that this thing ain't coming at us. This went off the backside. Both of these together allowed us to see that, all right? So that's how we do this. Now, again, we have this big, if that was coming at us, we'd be having a little bit different of a discussion, guys. Um, that, I'm not sure how strong this one was. But it looked to be pretty pretty strong and sizable. Anytime you see a halo, we always, you know, perk up. So after that CME, we actually got another one. See that? Okay, I'll show it to you over here. Again, that went off the backside. Probably from the same area of the sun. Why do we care about any of this? Well, it did affect us a little bit, not big time at all. We did get some radiation off of that. Even though it went off the backside, that big one, we still got radiation from it. Um, but yeah, and the other thing that we need to talk about is the sun rotates counterclockwise, so whatever's on the back will eventually be in the front <laughs> facing us if it holds together. So that's what we that's what we do. We watch those things, right? So we go over here to spaceweather.com. Go give them some love, guys. And they're talking about the same stuff I just talked about. Okay? Dense solar wind. I actually didn't even read that yet. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much saying the same thing I just told you guys. Um, but then they go on to talk about this Halo CME and how it did affect us. 
Um, it says, although the explosion occurred on the far side of the sun, it's still peppered Earth with high energy particles. Soho picked it up. Now, because Soho picked it up, that means it was coming directly at Earth, most likely. Because Soho is from our perspective. So, yeah. Um, these are the official sunspots here. 2842 and 2843. Got a couple of them facing us right now, but nothing too too crazy there. Now, um, noctilucent clouds. Those are it's water vapor freezing around meteor dust. So yeah, there you go. It happens in the summertime. Now again, we did see them too far north and too far south this past cycle. Okay. Um, down the southern hemisphere, uh, during their summertime last year, they were seeing them too far north. And right now, we're seeing we we seen them down in Europe and stuff. You, they they appear to be blue metallic, and you know when you look at them, and they're really high in the atmosphere. And again, it's it's from meteor dust freezing. I mean, uh, water vapor freezing around meteor dust is what causes these things. So typically, when you have a, a hotter um, season we see more of these now these haven't been like um recorded the data for these has not been recorded for all that long so we don't have a like a really far back way to see a kind of a cycle for these earthquakes not a whole lot to talk about guys um you know past few days we had some fives nothing real big okay no really big swarming at least that i've seen um, but sometimes we'll see an uptick when we get geomagnetic activity, you know, space weather. Um, we definitely sometimes see, a, you know, an uptick in the amount and sometimes the intensity. Um, they're taking that more and more into consideration now, guys. Um, they're finding out that, yes, it most certainly does. Space weather has an effect on this. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, guys. So, there you go. Here's your CMEs. I'll show them to you again here. Boom. And then here's the halo. Boom. So, again, eventually we're not going to be able to dodge these. Okay, and that's why we're talking about it. But I'll probably do a live stream later on. I just wanted to give you guys this update. I'll be trying to do this every morning or, you know, in the afternoon sometime, at least once a day. Uh, so, yeah, you might turn your bell on. Like I said, ring the bell if, if you want to catch me live and all that. I'm still going to be, you know, doing probably at least two a week. That's kind of my plan, two to three a week. And plus giving you guys these things once a day, these updates. So, uh, anyway, guys, Yahusha saves. You can drink this Kool-Aid.